back here is a grey water recycling system. So what we're doing here is we're collecting the bath water and the shower water that you use in your house when you're done with it. And we're reusing it to flush toilets. So that's going to save about 30% of the water that you would use in, in the typical house by reusing that water. Um, it's a really simple system and it's small. That's the beauty of grey water is we have a daily supply of grey water in the baths and showers. So we only need to store a day's worth of flushing. So we don't need a 10,000 litre tank, we only need 250 litres or 150 litres depending on the toilet. So uh, we don't actually have the toilet hooked up in that corner, but we, we have a bucket over there and there's somebody over there going to flush for us. <laughs> so what's happening is the stored grey water is now supplying the toilet that's in the other corner. More? No, that's good. Flush it again. Sure, flush it again. So instead of using tap water, we're now using grey water. Rurally, instead of drawing water from a deep well, we're drawing it from the basement 30% of the time. So we're going to even see some energy savings if you're in a deep well situation. As a backup, we use city water to keep the pump from ever going dry so that you can always flush. And we also overflow, so if you shower more than you can flush, it'll overflow down to the, to the uh, city sewer. So again, just, just to underscore what we said outside, this system is actually reducing energy as well, right Chris? Because it's using the water twice in the house. Okay. I did some calculations. If everybody in Ontario was reusing grey water and pumping it in their basement instead of from the lake, Ontario municipalities would be saving $35 million a year in electricity. Wow. And very much of that electrical is coming from nuclear power generation and coal at peak. Conventional ductwork leaks about 40% of its air out. So because this is a lead platinum house, I'm actually going to come back and balance the system and make sure that the heat that was actually intended for a room is going to get there. Okay? And that's something that's, that's uh, not done in residential construction right now. Um, again, I talked about the insulation. This is Roxel insulation. In LEED, we actually get points for using local materials, recycled content, and low emissions. So this actually gets one and a half points. The insulation in the walls is isonine, and we're actually getting, because of the air tightness effect on the house, an extra three LEED points, okay, towards our 96. And again, we have the equivalent to R10 underneath the slab. So even if we didn't have the radiant floor running down here max, it would still be 10 or 15 degrees above what it normally is. Probably, you didn't mention but I assume the boiler is modulating. Yeah, it's yeah. fully modulating. So it's like the accelerator in your car. Uh, right now it thinks it's a hot water tank, so it's only going to give us 45,000 BTUs. In the winter we can get up to about 99,000 out of that. And again, the thing to get in this house is, on the coldest day of the year we only need 25,000 BTUs and 50% of that is coming from the sun. So that thing probably isn't going to be running on a sunny day. John mentioned the rule of solar heating in this house. Okay, so solar provides 60%. So this water, let's say on a typical day in the, in the middle of the summer, might be hot enough that we don't require any heating whatsoever. So it would go into uh, this tank here, replacing the water that's drawn off for heating and no heat would be added by the boiler. If we get into a winter situation where there's snow on the solar collector and the temperature in this tank is much lower, then we're supplying cooler water in here to replace the hot water we use. There's a loop that goes through the boiler which brings that tank up to temperature. In a lot of cases, because we're using low flow appliances, low flow shower heads, that sort of thing, the draws are such that this secondary tank could be much, much smaller. We could get away with a storage tank maybe of about 10 gallons, if you actually do the calculations. A lot of the uh, uh, mechanical suppliers are not comfortable with that. In fact, you know, a 20 gallon tank is typically what's used because that's what they commonly stock. So we're, we're, we're in that transition where people are, are, are sort of looking at what does it take to, to do this type of... Uh, system and, and, and bit by bit as the need is arising, new, new technology is coming along. 
There is no heater in this tank. It is a storage tank. It has a thermostat that calls for heat when the temperature drops down. So if water coming from here is hot enough to replace the water, the hot water that's drawn out of the tank, it never calls for heat. If the temperature drops down to a certain level, it will trigger the thermostat, turn a pump on to circulate some of the water through the boiler before it comes into that tank. So the system is a little bit more complicated in some ways, but it's kind of cool. You could have all of your capacity supplied by solar, and basically it flows through the system, and the system never ever calls for heat. The, the difference with this cabinetry is that it's made with all no added urea formaldehyde uh, particle board. The particle board is 100% post-consumer recycled material. The binders are vegetable based uh, uh, rather than uh, formaldehyde based. Uh, as a result, basically uh, no off-gassing and lead, uh, lead point compliance in that regard. Uh, the other thing that we, we have with this product is FSC certified. And so it's certified by the Ford Stewardship Council. Uh, all the material here is again like the lumber in the house coming from uh, forests that are sustainably harvested. Uh, so as a result, the product has a, a lead, uh, contributes to lead points for the builder on a number of different levels. The, uh, the emission level because of the no added uh, urea formaldehyde, the FSC, uh, the sustainable forest approach. It is uh, again 100% recycled product, post consumer recycled and also locally sourced. So in that way, and uh, the real important point from my standpoint here is in the grand scheme of things, all those extra lead points and, and all the uh, benefits from a sustainable forestry standpoint and from an air quality standpoint come at a very small premium. Uh, compared to our regular cabinetry, this adds basically uh, no more than about 5% to the entire cost of the cabinetry. Okay, so this isn't funky art. This is actually drain water heat recovery. And these are connected to the two bathrooms upstairs. When the shower water goes down the tube, 60% of that energy is used to preheat the hot water tank downstairs. And again, this is a technology that's low tech. When you turn on the shower faucet, you're feeding the hot water tank. And that water that's coming from the street is coming up here, it's going from, I guess I should be Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So it's raising the water temperature before it goes to the conventional tank. So this will save 40% on your water bill a year, probably about 150 bucks. And uh, what we really need to happen is for energy to cost what it costs. Remember I talked about the six pack of beer? There's only three beers left. This should be a good investment, but energy costs are not reflecting their scarcity. I think the other feature, we're gonna have all hardwood floors here, and they're gonna be FSC, again, from a managed wood lot. So let's go upstairs. This floor is gonna be actually a little bit higher than air temperature and closer to your core body temperature. So there's a radiant floor in here. This is the room over the garage, which is normally quite cold. Water. Yeah. Yeah, but that's mostly for cooling, Max. Yeah. It's in floor. No below. So look at it. We're getting uh, 80 degrees. Just the tubing. Now, do you use the aluminum plates to? No, we actually use reflective foil, and then we sprayed isonine under that. Four bedrooms. And this has actually got a radiant floor here, but it's not on. So this whole shower stall, everything in here is radiant as well. But getting to the water efficiency side, we have dual flush toilets. So they're actually using a lot less. I think our toilets are using 1.1 uh, gallons per flush. 